All right. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us for our closing ceremony. And thank you, everyone, for your participation in QRISE. We are excited today to announce our winners and awardees from the process and first go over a little bit of a recap of how this event worked. All right. There we go. Screen sharing issues. So a quick recap on, okay, a quick recap on our challenges. We had Microsoft, QERA, Classic, Inflection, Unitary Fund, and IBM Quantum as our wonderful uh, partners for this event, giving us multiple different quantum challenges for you all to investigate uh, about resource estimation, uh, compilers, or co compilers, implementing exponential quantum advantage algorithms, atomic clocks, error mitigation techniques, and dynamic circuits. Throughout this event, we had six weeks where we started off with our kickoff, some workshops and two wonderful speakers. And now we've concluded with the project submissions and the judging, and we'll be able to go over and look at some of the winners from our challenges. So how these challenge awardees will go, we will first talk about one of the companies, and then we will name the winners and honorable mentions. And we wanna do a short spotlight on the winners. We'll share about one to two minutes of clip from the video or a picture from their presentation so we can kind of show a little bit of the work that these groups have done. And all of the winners will be contacted after this ceremony towards by Monday. So you can start scheduling your appointments with the teams that organize these challenges. Uh, first, uh, Angela will be walking you all through the Microsoft awardees. So for honorable mentions, we have teams Quaffles, Eagle Eye, Quantum Wizards, and Two Minas, and our winners are team QCATS and team Exponential. So our first winner spotlight is for QCATS, and this team um, implemented, uh, their project was quantum resource estimation of the quantum approximate optimization algorithm, or QAOA. And they implemented QAOA by solving the number partition problem, and they discovered that the ion gate-based quantum computer performs the best. Um, they also offered recommendations for parameters to use to optimize the success of implementation. Um, here in the photo, you can see one of their analyses on determining the optimal trade-off between performance and error budget. Our next winner spotlight is Team Exponential, and they did resource estimation of Regev's algorithm. An exponential number of angles by manually integrating the Gaussian. There's much more room for improvement by taking advantage of the symmetry of the bell curve. And there are many other straight preparation methods. These are worth trying out, and this is an exciting area of future work. This is the space-time diagram for Gaussian state prep. The QSharp library is a lot faster in terms of runtime and uses tens of thousands less phys physical qubits. Mortenen and Grover Rudolph have high depth and use multi-controlled rotations, which is not friendly for nearest neighbor architectures. However, they perform a little better in terms of T-gates. We also explored some ways to implement quantum modular exponentiation. A to the n can be computed much faster than n minus one multiplications. If we write our n in binary, we only need to perform at most log n multiplications. Binary exponentiation is at the core of that idea. Another technique that uses Fibonacci numbers to exp exponentiate, and this relies on a Zeckendorf representation. We profile both binary and Fibonacci exponentiation, each with a uniform or Gaussian distribution. We notice that the choice of base significantly impacts runtime, and this validates Regev's strategy of choosing small primes as the base. We use the Q-sharp built-in method in all the profiles here, as this is the fastest method we have for Gaussian state prep. The best performing method is the Fibonacci exponentiation with uniform distribution. It would be exciting to know if using a Gaussian actually helps in practice as much as it helps in theory. We an exponential number of angles.
Sorry for the technical issue there. Uh, but now for the Unitary Fund challenge. All right. So this challenge explored the efficacy of stacking multiple quantum error mitigation techniques by leveraging the MIDI Python toolkit. Now, as for, for the awardees for this challenge, we had uh, quite a lot of impressive submissions. The winners in this category uh, are the DNA game and MACS. And the honorable mentions are UFO and Qmetra. Now, onto the spotlights, uh, the DNA game, this was by far one of the best submissions we received and explores how genetic algorithms can be used for quantum error mitigation. One of the fastest ways, and that's the worst way to approach a problem of a large size. So more intelligently, we're going to use a genetic algorithm. So what this is, it's uh, an optimization search. It's a scheme that simulates evolution. And it's most important because you can start with a known okay solution and use a pretty fast approach to get a better solution. Moving on, there's one of the fastest ways. Next spotlight is for uh, the MACS. One of the now, this, uh, this solution involved using uh, developing a method to reduce the noisiness of data using an ANSAT circuit. And those were the winners for the Unitary Con. All right. So for QERA, um, the challenge was to create a compilation wow. visualizer for the neutral atom based quantum computers over there. Um, and yeah, we had, uh, we had a couple winners. So our winners were Atomic and the Rydberg Rangers. We're going to see their videos in the coming slides. Hello, we are team Rydberg Rangers. here presenting our project for the Q-Era Neutral Atom Computer Visualizer, Visualizer, right? Our project is made fully in Python. And if we press play right here on just the main.py file, we will see our project open up. And over here you see Qubits, right? And an experiment designer, we can actually load in our own circuit that we can run on a neutral atom computer and see what it looks like, what's going on under the hood, right? So we can enter our own circuit composer, or we have our own circuit composer, we can enter your own circuit there. We also have raw open chasm input. And right now I'll just be, for simplicity, inputting some simple raw open chasm uh, input for a circuit that we will visualize on our neutral atom computer. So yeah, it's pretty simple uh, circuit that we're running on 10 qubits over here. You can see that it goes from storage and to readout, vice versa. Oh no, great. And once we have finished the visualization, we can see this. The visualization is complete. And we can now head back to the main menu to start another experiment, right? And again, this works with any circuit you guys input. All sorts of, any open chasm input will work over here as well as our own circuit composer or you can use your imagination and let that run wild and make your own circuit. Here is Atomic. Hello, everyone. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Dmitry Hitrin. And this is a compilation visualizer for neutral atom gate-based quantum computers. So our tool incorporates different strategies to enhance control over quantum operation and their accurate representation. And a key aspect of our visualizer is its focus on logical qubit encoding, uh, particularly using the Steam code, which allows for robust error correction. Additionally, it features circuit de decomposition, translating high-level algorithm into uh, executable operations with hardware uh, native gates. And this combination ensures our visualizer not only supports theoretical models, but it's also practical for real-world quantum uh, computing applications, uh, including research applications. And now let's see how it works. So recently, optical tweezers technology has been utilized to enhance the scalability of neutral atom quantum computers. These devices facilitate all-to-all -all connectivity thanks to shuttling of qubits within the atomic trap, opening up significant possibilities for the application of quantum error correction protocols. However, 
Uh, the complex dynamics of atom shuttling require sophisticated quantum circuit compilation and visualization tools. So in our project, we built upon the compilation strategy presented by UCLA and Harvard earlier this year. Uh, you can see what their animation looks like on the slide. Uh, since the pre-existent compiler only supports uh, two qubit gates, our goal was to add single qubit operations into both quantum circuit synthesis and compilation visualizer. And this is sort of our journey. Yeah, thank you to all the QR submissions and the participants. Here's Classic. Okay, in Classic's challenge is for implementing an ex implementing an exponential quantum advantage algorithm. And uh, as honorable mentions, we have not so classic. And as winners, we have classic entanglers, Schrodinger's decoders, and the integrant pair. Um, this group demonstrated a rigorous understanding of the problem setup and introduced various Hamiltonian simulation techniques, such as the Suzuki trotter, Q drift, and etc. And their GitHub was comprehensive, which outlined details regarding the explicit construction of the Hamiltonian. We can move to the other. Okay. And in, uh, in this group's project, the, in addition to implementing the simulation of coupled classical oscillators, their verification of their solution through energy conservation especially enhanced their project and demonstrated an understanding of the physical concept behind the problem at hand. And in this group's project, the introduction of the prompt was clear and they were able to break down the paper into subparts, which, which gave them to, so stronger conceptual backgrounds. We were especially impressed with how they were able to run their simulation on IBM hardware and interpret the results in relation to their expected sim simulation results. It was interesting to see how they differed and their postulations as to why this was the case. And we can move to the inflection. Thanks. The inflections challenge focused on atomic clock design improvement with fault tolerant devices. Uh, and our winners for this category are our team, maybe a cat. Now, going on to the spotlight, uh, maybe a cat uh, proposed a solution by through the, through the use of various techniques, including a VQE and QPE. Here's a clip. There are two ways. The first way, like we saw in the paper, the VQE, Variational Quantum Eigen Solver, which is used for, to uh, find the ground state energy of the molecule, but it can also be adopted to optimize the quantum sensor performance. But the new way that I came up with is QPE. So I feel in a way QPE could be used as um, inferometer. So to me, it is used usually to measure the phase or frequency of an unknown eigenvalue of a unitary operator, which is critical in precision measurement like those needed in the atomic clocks. So how I tend to use it is first prepare a superposition by using the Hadamard gates and then conditionally apply a phase kickback using controlled U gates. Then use the destructive interference using inverse quantum Fourier transform and measure. So it could be directly used to measure, uh, so it improves the precision of frequency standards used in atomic clocks. In quantum metrology, GHZ states, Fantastic, all right. Um... Yeah, next up we have the IBM challenge. So the, the IBM challenge was focused on utilization of this feature of dynamic circuits where you can um, condition a quantum operation on the classical outcome of a measurement made previously in the circuit. Um, so this challenge involved using measure and feed forward to improve existing quantum algorithms and also exploring how noise uniquely affects these kind of circuits and what uh, ways you might find to characterize and mitigate that error. Um, all right, Katie. All right, so um, for IBM, we'd like to uh, announce our winners, the Dynamic Quantum Avengers uh, and the Feynman Prodigies, funny name. Um, and 
for uh, our honorable, men honorable mentions, we have Quantum Revolution 2, QCool, QExplore, and QCIG IITJ. Um, thank you so much. It was hard to, uh, you know, um, uh, hard, hard to uh, pick clear winners out of these projects. So thank you so much for your hard work. Um, so now we're going to move on to spotlight a couple aspects of the winning projects that uh, led us to, to choose these. So first we have the Dynamic Quantum Avengers, and uh, what impressed us about their project was the um, breadth of stuff they, they tried out. So in quantum teleportation, uh, GHC state preparation for generating long range yes. entanglement, um, and then characterizing how errors affect both of those procedures by using uh, randomized benchmarking, and also recognizing that dynamic circuits find their application in quantum error correction and benchmarking that as well. So uh, now we'd like to play, this uh, video has been cropped for time, but we'd like to play a couple minutes of their submission. This is Armin Fatima, and I'm here to pre give a presentation on my side of the project for the, for the QRISE challenge. So for my part, I did quantum teleportation experiment. So what is exactly quantum teleportation? So quantum teleportation is a fundamental concept in quantum theory, which essentially allows the transfer of the quantum information from one location to another without physically transporting the particle itself. It essentially involves three main steps. That is the entanglement of the quantum particles, the measurement of the state to be teleported, and the transmission of the measurement outcome to the receiver. So this technique essentially does not transmit the matter or energy itself, but rather the information encoded in the quantum states. And it relies on the principles of quantum entanglement and no, no cloning theorem. So I worked on two parts of uh, quantum teleportation to assess the error and noise in the circuit. That is randomized benchmarking technique and quantum controlled error correction. So randomized benchmarking is a technique used to measure the average error of the quantum gates in quantum computing. It essentially involves applying sequences of random quantum gate operations, typically the Clifford gates, to a quantum state and measure how the state deviates from its original form after these operations have been performed. So this method is beneficial because it is relatively insensitive to the errors in the state preparation and measurement. And it focuses instead on Yeah, and uh, oh, sorry, skip back to the last slide um, just for a sec, as long as the video doesn't autoplay. Yeah, and, and uh, we'd like to thank uh, Hubert, um, Ayaman Fatima, and Umi Yamaguchi for their work in this project. All right. Uh, next slide, thanks. Okay, and uh, our second spotlight is uh, the Feynman Prodigies, um, Abdullah Kazi, Jacob Park, and um, Owaya Siddiqui. I hope I'm pronouncing your names correctly, but thank you so much for your work. Um, so we, what we were impressed with this project is that it had a relatively amb ambitious scope and a very interesting use of dynamic circuits. Um, so this project was about um, using a uh, variational quantum eigensolver to find, to estimate the Gibbs free energy of an Ising model. And the way that dynamic circuits were applied in this project was to um, estimate uh, observables that have a higher order in the in the density matrix. So in this case, um, uh, in this expansion of the free energy, you have this term. Uh, this is an example from their write-up, the trace of the density operator cubed. And uh, in order to measure this, there's this swap test-like circuit that relies on uh, mid-circuit measure measurements um, and then unconditional resets. So uh, we liked this application of dynamic circuits and we were impressed with how ambitious the project was. Uh, so thank you so much for your work. All right, now that I'm unmuted, our conclusion, and sorry for the technical errors, uh, Google Slides was really fighting me today. But for the logistics, we will send out participation certificates to everyone who submitted a challenge um, by Monday is our goal. We will do our best to get out by then. Um, feel free to ping us if you don't get it by Monday. Uh, just please wait a couple days. Until then, we'll do our best. Um, and congratulations to all of our winners. And thank you to everyone who participated. And especially thank you to those who submitted something in this. Um, but we're glad at for anyone who could have participated in any capacity possible. Um, look for an email from us to set up your sponsor presentation for the winners. Um, sponsor pre presentations will occur Hopefully over the next two weeks, we'll do our best to accommodate for everyone's schedule. Um, 
be ready with your group to figure out, fill out what times you're available. And we'll get those logistics figured out starting early next week. And we'll also be trying to get our winning projects up on our website by Monday. All right, and uh, we'd like to add also that um, even though QRISE is now ending, um, there are other ways that you can stay engaged both with the Quantum Coalition and with this broader sort of online quantum computing community if this is something you enjoyed and something you're interested in. So uh, first we'd like to announce the Quantum Coalition mailing list. Um, so we're setting up a formal mailing list and we'll send an email with a join link to everybody who signed up for QRISE. Um, so uh, if you were getting the QRISE emails, you'll see another email in your inbox soon with the link to join the Quantum Coalition mailing list. Uh, and this is a place you can stay tuned for uh, more information from us about any future events that we host um, next year or anything that we have going on. And in addition, the Slack will remain open and it, it remains a place where you can uh, chat with other enthusiasts and ask questions about quantum computing, um, find people to work on projects with, and continue to work on the projects you uh, started for QRIS, if that's something you're interested in. In addition to that, um, this is a uh, you know quantum coalition. Uh, we think of ourselves as part of a broader community, and you can uh, stay active by joining the Unitary Fund Discord. Uh, they have a fantastic Discord community. They have regular weekly chats. Um, it's a very sort of one of like robust Discord server. Um, there's also a, a Quera public Slack that you can join to ask questions about blockade or, or blockade Python now. Um, and uh, there's, oh, I, oh, it says classic, but it should say classic with a Q. Um, uh, the, the classic also has a great community over Slack and they're very responsive. So if you ask a question, I find that classic representatives get back to me very quickly. Um, and then lastly, there's the Kiskit Slack, which the advantage of that is it's a very broad community. So there, there are tons of people there and likely somebody will be able to answer Kiskit related questions that you have. Um, hopefully you can find all of those links available publicly. Feel free to message us if you have uh, issues. And yeah, finally, just thank you again for everyone who participated. We hope you all enjoyed the event as much as we enjoyed hosting it and putting it on for you all. Uh, we hope that this was a great opportunity for you to experience uh, some relevant quantum topics, meet some of our sponsors, go through some workshops, and we're happy to provide this workshop and or this closing ceremony, all our workshops and the speaker series on YouTube. So you can always reference it later. Um, feel free to reach out with us with any comments, uh, questions, concerns, recommendations for next year, trying to get involved. Just like Ben said, stay engaged, uh, keep growing the quantum community and Thank you for coming.